Guild Corporation, half a million employees and stockholders present the Theater Guild on the air. Our play tonight is John Ferguson by Sinjin Irvine. Starring Martha Scott as Hannah, Whitford Cain as John Ferguson, Carl Swenson as James Caesar, and Edwin Jerome as Henry Witherow. And here is Lawrence Langner, co-director with Theresa Halpern of the Theatre Guild, to tell you about tonight's play. Mr. Langner. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we bring you John Ferguson by St. John Irvin. But for this play, I probably wouldn't be here tonight talking to you about the Theatre Guild on the air. This play saved our lives. When we started the Guild, our first production was a failure, and we were in a hole. We needed a fine play to pull us out. I was walking along Fifth Avenue in New York late one afternoon when I passed Brentano's bookstore and decided to look through the plays there. I searched through volume after volume but found nothing until suddenly I was attracted by the name St. John Irvine. I remember that about ten years before, I'd met Irvine at a debating society where he voted for a resolution I brought in. As a matter of fact, he was the only one who did vote for it, and that was one reason I remembered him. The play I picked off the shelf was John Ferguson. I started to read it, not realizing that time was passing. When I finally told the sales lady I would like to buy the book, she said she was sorry, but it was too late, as the store had already closed. I pleaded with her, however, and by some stroke of luck, I persuaded her to break the store rules and sell me the book. You can imagine my excitement when I realized it was just the play we were looking for. I showed it to my colleagues, Miss Helburn, Mr. Muller, Mr. Simonson, Mr. Wertheim, Miss Wesley, and Mr. Peters. For once in our lives, we were all agreed and put the play on immediately. On the opening night, our fate hung in the balance. But the next morning, the reviews were wonderful, and there was a line at the box office that stretched all the way down the block. But suddenly, our hopes were dashed to the ground. The famous actor strike came just then, and the players were called out of all the New York theaters. Luck was with us again, however, for the Guild had already recognized actors' equity, and they allowed us to continue. For 15 weeks, John Ferguson was the only play running in New York. If you wanted to go to the theater at all... You just had to go to our hit, John Ferguson. Although the scene of this play is Ireland, it might have happened anywhere. We have selected it for tonight because of its fine character drawing, its rich drama, and its fundamental truth. And now for the play, John Ferguson. <laughs> John may only be a half-wit, but he knows all the passes in County Down. Like Sam when he'd be late with the mail the time we want him early. No, Hannah Child. You shouldn't be blaming Sam. Maybe there's a storm at sea. Maybe the train was delayed. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Aren't you the queer one for making excuses for people? Here, let me tuck this rug about you. It's turn and chill. And me, the man that was always active. There wasn't one could beat me at the reaping, not one. Sometimes when I hear my son Andrew out with the men gathering the harvest and them shouting to one another and laughing hearty, I, I near cry. Now, da, da, don't go on that way. I am a poor, mealy man to be complaining. God knows his own ways best. Listen to this from the Bible, Sarah. Sing unto the Lord. In his favor is life. Weep and may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. 
There's great comfort here. Well, we have need of joy in this house. It's a queer, poor lookout. You not having a letter from your brother William in America this long while, and him knowing you're sick and helpless and needing the money. Only with old a hard man, John. Not one to wait long. Hard to see what purpose there is in this fortune. For people that never done nothing to deserve it. Daughter, dear, you're only a young slip of a girl. Do you think the Lord doesn't know how to look after his own world? I do. Sometimes I do. There's things hid from you and me because we, we're not fit to know them. But the more we fill ourselves with the glory of God, it's people that's full of sin, Hannah. Not letting the sun and the air and the warmth of God into their heart. There now, John. You've gone and made yourself tired with all that talk. Someone's coming up the lane. Maybe that's the mail. Ah, uh, it's only that Jimmy Caesar. I wonder what he wants. I wouldn't be surprised that it's you he's after. Ma, I wouldn't marry him if he was the last man in the world. Well, dear, bless us. If he was the last man in the world, I would like to be making you an offer of him. Jimmy Caesar's an old collie. Look at the way he goes on about threatening to have Witherell's life when he doesn't mean to take it. Daughter, dear, Jimmy Caesar doesn't mean half he says. Now, sure, Hannah. If we were all to say just what we meant, more than a half of us would be struck dumb. Just the same I like a man to have a spirit and do what he said he'd do or else keep his tongue quiet. Oh, it's brave and hard to be having a spirit in these times. Sure, the man must have some pluck in him, making a good business after Witherell only bankrupting him and killing his old darn ma with grief. Oh, oh. If ever I could talk talking now, he's likely to step in the door any minute. But I dare say Jimmy has a big bit of money saved up in the Ulster Bank. Well, there's you are. Good day, Jimmy. Well, Hannah, how you I, uh, I hope you are keeping your health. I'm bravely, thank you. Well, I didn't see you this while back, and I, I was wondering... Well, I'm, I'm glad to see them so fine on it. Are you keeping well, John? Oh, I'm as well as can be expected, Jimmy. Aye, it's a queer blow to any man to be thinking on leaving the house he was born and reared in, the way I had to do. Heaven curse Henry Witherell. Now, Jimmy, Jimmy. Uh, you're, you're a forgiven man, John Ferguson, but I'll never forgive Witherell if I do to be a hundred. I'll talk the life out of him one of these days. Why are you always talking, Jimmy Caesar? Oh, I, I never do, Aunt Hannah. Did you're right, you're right. I go out sometimes, demented mad, swearing to have his life. And I come home again, I fear to lay a finger on him. I'm, I'm heart sore at my weakness. But it's not for want of desire I don't do an injury to him. Would you sin your soul of murder? Man, man, you're in God's grief already for the dark thoughts in your head. Oh, for dear's sake, quit talking about murders. Don't disturb yourself, Ma. Do you know it's only talk? Well, Hannah, it's the you I want to have a talk with. I, I was wondering, uh, would you be coming down to the town tonight? I'm not. Ah, now, Hannah, you can just go down and get a few things from Jimmy's shop that I want. You don't need the things till the morning, Ma. Well, Hannah, I, I want to speak to you particularly. Uh, will you not come out with me for a wee while? I'm not in the way of going out again tonight, thank you. Now, you have nothing to do, Hannah, and you can go along with him rightly. Come in, come in. Oh, it's you, Henry, with the I, There it is. I was just passing John, thought I'd drop him in... Here, how you were getting on. Well, that was thoughtful of you, Henry. How are you, Hannah? Oh, you're getting to be a fine-looking girl. She'll be having all the boys after her, Mrs. Ferguson. Hey, I wouldn't mind going after her myself. Take a thought yourself, Henry, with her off. Oh, little Jimmy Heath. You haven't a notion of him, have you, Hannah? Your manners could be better, Mr. Witheroff. Your presence in this house is not welcome. Oh, indeed. Have you bought the house, Mr. Caesar? I've heard nothing about the sale. I hold the mortgage, you know. There's no need for better talk, Henry. And I came only to discuss a wee matter of business. I don't suppose you want to talk about your affairs before... Uh, and uh, so, if Mr. James Caesar will attend to his shop... Hannah, you run down to the shop with Jimmy now and leave your darn need to talk to Mr. Witherall. Ma! Ma! It's down the window way past the door. Hi, sir! Are you going past without giving us our letter? Good day to you, Hannah. Then, haven't you one for us? No, nothing to do. Oh, Lord save us, he hasn't written after all. Maybe the American mail isn't in yet, Sam. Oh, it's been right enough. I, I left the letter over at Daniel's farm from the doctor in Boston. <laughs> well, good evening, Twitter. Good evening to you, Sam. <laughs> there now, Sarah, don't take on. 
Whatever the meaning of it, remember it's God's will. I uh, suppose this means you can't pay off the mortgage, John. I'm afraid so, Henry. Well, money's very close at present. I'll have to stand by me bargain, though I'm that sorry. That's a lie, Henry Witherall. What? You know rightly you'd had your heart set on this. Why, you, I'd close your mouth if I had to kill you. Jimmy. Go out of this house, Henry, with oh. you. And if I don't... Hannah, what have you done? If you loved me, that's what. And smartly, too. Hannah, you ought to marry a man, not an old Ginny Joe like this Caesar. Well, John, it's no good talking. Here they have the money, or... Well, I'm sorry to disappoint such a rare spirited girl as you, Hannah. But I can't ruin myself to oblige other people. Good day, dear. Wait! Oh, one last word from James Caesar is quiet. I'll spite you, Henry Witherow, I will. John, I'm willing to pay off the mortgage for you. It cost me every penny I have. Oh, God reward you, Jimmy. If Hannah'll have me, I'm willing to, Mrs. Hannah. Oh, ha, ha. I, uh, Hannah'll have you. You'd make a bargain in your ma's coffin, Jimmy Caesar. Well, me bold girl, are you to take this pineapple? I'd like to know. There's no good me going to me lawyer and incurring expense needlessly. It's well for you, my dust stick. And there's no man to throw you out of this house. You've a sharp tongue, Hannah. I'd like to cut a bit of it off for you. Oh, no, bless it, that's Oh, it's only pretty dark. Jump that half-wit. Always putting his nose in at the wrong time. He can smell trouble, that one. Ladies, gentlemen... There's many a sad face here. Would you like to hear my whistle? Uh, oh, good evening, Mr. Witherall. Get away with your crookie. We don't want you here with your whistle. John, let me know about the market. Good day to you all. Save us, he's called poor Clutie. It's all he can do, strike the weak. Aye, and beat poor fellas that's away in the mind like Clutie John. Did he hurt you much, Clutie? Yes, he did. But I can still toot him. Hey, Clutie, did you not hear Mrs. Ferguson go away with your whistle? Ah, sure. You, uh, didn't kill Mr. Witherall yet, Mr. Caesar? Go along to the devil out of this, will you? Don't curse at the poor soul, Jimmy. Sure, you know rightly he's a stray in the mind. Ah, oh, that's true, Mrs. Ferguson. I'm aware the head may ought to be locked up in the asylum. Why don't you do some work? I would rather be whistling. There's plenty good work. But you can whistle. What do you want, Clutie? I want many of things I'll never get. Did you by chance want anything to eat? I always want something to eat. Hannah, <laughs> give the poor lad a sup of sweet milk and a piece of soda bread. That's a nice thing, Hannah, for you to be attended on the like of him. Why shouldn't I serve him? We're all children of the one father, Jimmy. We're serving him when we're serving each other. Here's some bread and milk, Clutie. Oh, Lord, love you, Hannah, for your kind heart. Ah, this is the grand sweet milk. John, hey, you heard me off about the mortgage and Hannah and me? There's no good in a man and woman marrying if they've no kindly feeling for each other. Hannah has to decide them things for herself, Jimmy, with the help of God. Not with mine. Well, Hannah. Da. Aye, daughter. Da, I... I, I don't know what to say. Hannah, you, your da and ma could live on in the place where he was born. Whatever you think best would be right, Hannah. I da. Jimmy? Aye, Hannah. I... I thank you for your offer. I, I'll have you. Thank the Lord, Hannah. Thank the I, Lord. I, I can't tell you all I feel, Hannah, but I, I have to be a good man. Jim. May God bless the two of you. Yes, yes, yes. You have to keep the road, you know, Hannah. We did not have a minute to spend with you, but for all these interruptions. Very well, Jimmy. Are you going to marry him, Hannah? Aye, Clutie. Oh, you're caught. Hannah, don't be wasting your time talking to him. Good evening to you, Jimmy. Good evening, Good evening Andrew. Andrew. Oh, my, you're looking tired, Andrew. I am tired. How are you, da? Oh, I'm rightly soon. Andrew, I've great news for you. Me and your sister's going to be married. you what? Going to be married, Andrew. Hannah's just settled it. Jimmy says you'll pay the mortgage, John. Uh, it's kind of Jimmy, isn't it, Andrew? <laughs> yes, when the, Hannah and me is going now for a bit of a dander together. You know the way a couple likes to be by their lawn, don't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, you ready, Hannah? Aye. Well, come on, come on. Good night, dear. Good, Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Jimmy. Good night. I won't be long before I'm back. It's a queer and sweet habit to be walking with you 
without Maloney. Uh, we should be married right off, don't you say? I don't rightly know, Jimmy. I uh, hope that you'd be wishing a big family. It was always for the wee children. Those people want a good marriage like they was, don't you say? Life is not something so, Jimmy. I... I'd better be turning back now. Oh, but you've only, you've only come a step. And, and, and there's much to talk about. I and uh, something to do that don't take talking. But why your face in the starlight? I've been dreaming. Here, kiss me, honey. No, no Jimmy, not, not yet. No, but you promised me wife. And that, that means... Yes, come now. Don't, Jimmy, don't. I, please. That, well, now, that, that wasn't satisfactory. Half on the cheek it was. Do the start. Come, just another try. Please, Jimmy. I... <laughs> yeah, that's better. Might would be fine to be bidding and cooing by alone like this every day. I feel faint, Jimmy. I must go back now. I... I, I love make the woman faint. And, and a man, too, for that matter. Well, go back now and wait for me. I'll run by me shop and then come to you. We'll make our wedding plan. <laughs> Are you thinking I'm letting her marry Jimmy just to save the farm? I don't know what to think, Doc. And sure, what does it matter anyway? The great thing for a girl to get a comfortable home. Sure, there's nothing in the end to be a kind man and a good home where the money is easy and regular. Anyway, we can't let your dad be turned out of his home. Oh, that, that is the reason. Hannah's marrying Jimmy sees a farm. No, no, Andrew. I put no compulsion no, on No, no, Di. I know you wouldn't intentionally. But do you believe she's taken him of her own free will just because she says she is? Sure, and what else can we believe? Oh, Doc, Doc! What is it, daughter? Oh, she's overwrought oh, with excitement. There, Hannah, dear. Hannah, do you not want to marry Jimmy Seymour? Yes, Mrs. Andrew. Now it's all settled. She had to give way. Sure, that's natural. There, daughter, dear. Just cry away now till you're deaf. Hannah, Hannah. I, Doc. Now, don't cry. I can't bear it. Listen. I've never deceived or been unjust to you. Have I, daughter? No, Doc. And you know I beg my bread sooner nor hurt you, don't you? I, Doc. Well, don't be afraid to say what's in your mind, then. You can't what? I can't take him, Doc. Very well, daughter. That'll be all right. Don't annoy yourself no more about him. I tried hard. I, I did. When he bid me good night and kissed me out in the lonely, I near died. But you promised him, Hannah. John, you never go to let her break her word to the men. Hannah, think shame of your I can't take him, Ma. I can't. Do you want to see your sick dog turned out of the hole he was born in? This woman... Ah, oh, could... what's wrong with Jimmy Caesar? There's plenty of girls who give the two eyes out of their head to have the chance. What call have you to be... Ma, that's no way to talk I'll to her. I'll say what I want to say. You'll say no more else. I'll walk out of the door and never come back again. Oh, you're all against me. I'll have to quit the house I was brought to when I was a young girl. Maybe go out to the poor house. If we have to go to the poor house, Taylor, we'll have to go. <laughs> Andrew, put on your coat and go up to Wivelos right now. And tell him he can take the farm. Go on, Andrew. No. I'll go. It's for me to do. It'll quieten me down to have the walk. I didn't tell Jimmy yet, Da. And he's coming up here after he closes his shop. Maybe you'll tell him before I come back. I will, don't. Here, put a shawl over your head against the night air now. I don't. Will I say, will you, lady, and his calling born to you? No, no, Trudy. Just keep quiet there in the heat of the fire. Uh, it's well to be them that has a good fire, whatever they want it. Well, we likely won't have it long. No, Sarah. Reach the Bible to me, Andrew. Here, da. Will I set the lamp in your elbow, da? Thank you, son. Thank you. Uh... Sorry, I'll to we drop more tea, Andrew. Thank you, Ma. More tea, Lucy. Aye, if you please, Mrs. Ferguson. I don't often get the like of this. Hannah's guy and long and getting back from with her own. Aye, long. Oh, Clutie, will you weigh and open it, will you? It'll be Hannah or Jimmy. Hannah wouldn't knock. Well, I'm late and not expected to be. Where's Hannah? She's out, Jimmy. Out, is she? But I told her. <laughs> well, she, she'll have to keep better hours than this when she's married, eh? Well, I, I hope she'll not be long. I, I want to discuss the wedding with her. The wedding? 
Why? Sure, there's no sense in our waiting long, is there, Mrs. Ferguson? <laughs> Listen to me calling you Mrs. Ferguson. I ought to start calling you Ma. Or, or would you rather I call you Mother? Why? I, I'm not particular, Jimmy. Jimmy, I want to say something to you. Hi, right, John. I, I can't start calling you Da or Papa or anything else but John, can I? You know, I've been making plans in my head, John, about the future of the farm. Jimmy, first let me say... No, I, but, but wait till I tell you about my plan. Andrew, uh, you could maybe resume your studies for the ministry. I might be able to advance the money. That's a kindly thought, Jimmy. Well, I've, uh, I've often thought I'd like to be related to a minister. It, it looks well to be able to say that the Reverend Mr. Stone's so is your brother-in-law. Jimmy, Hannah's changed her mind. Change the mind. What do you mean? What? You mean she doesn't want to marry me no more? Aye, that's what I mean. But oh, quit your cotton, for dear sake. I'm not cotton, Jimmy. Well, but she gave a promise to me no more than an hour ago. What? Well, what's come over? It's a thing you can't rightly explain. Jimmy. The farm and the mortgage. I told her to go up to Withers and tell him to foreclose. That's the way of it, Jimmy. I'm heart sore about it, but it can't be helped, nor can it. Oh, I, I, I suppose you never thought of my profession, John Ferguson. I've told all my neighbors already that Hannah and me are to be married. My doc can't help it, can he, if Hannah doesn't want to marry you? Then what will Withero say? He'll be the first to know. Oh, that's kindness for you. That's the reward a man gets for being neighborly. I would have spared you from this if I could, Jimmy. Can't you make a cheaper promise? Would you marry a woman that doesn't want you? I want her, don't I? My heart's hungry for her. I've loved her since, since she was a child. Many and many the time I, I imagined her and me married and living happy. Us with two or three wee children. Oh, I could see her walking about in a fine silk dress. And all the neighbors nudging each other. Saying how well we must be getting on in the world. And when, when, when she said she'd have me, I, I, I could feel big lumps rolling off of me. I was lighthearted and happy. For all I knew, she was only consenting to... Save your farm. I had my heart's desire. I never felt so like a man before. And now... There, there, Jimmy. Oh, I can't bear to see a man crying. Ah, there's no thing going on. That. Leave the man to his grief, Andrew. I, I, I know rightly I'm making a poor show myself. I can't help it. It'll be better for me to be going or to be here when she comes back. What is it, Ruthie? Uh, Oh, why are you running, Clutie? In the name of heaven, what ails the fella? Oh, he's gone into the night like a wild thing. Look out the window, Andrew. I, I can't see much, Ma. Oh, wait. But there's someone running up the moon. It, it's Hannah. Hannah. What's happened, Hannah, dear? You're all out of breath. Your uh, breath is all torn. Did you hurt yourself? This child. Why, the blood is there gone from her face. Hannah. It's withered. Oh, by heaven, I'd go mad if any harm has come to her. Oh, quiet yourself, Jimmy. She'll tell us when she's herself. If Wither or Tom, I'll kill him, I will. So help me. Quit, quit all of you. Are you better now, Hannah? I die. I'm better. I'll tell you. I went up to Wither or Tom, I knew it had something to do with Wither Don't bother her, Jimmy. Go on, Hannah, go on. I, I told him we couldn't pay the money, and he was too foreclosed. Then he began laughing at me, making a mock of Jimmy. Well, he made a mock of me, did he? Yeah, I didn't, I think. Go on, daughter, go on. I was just coming away when he said he'd walk the length of the lonely with me. Well, we were walking along. Aye, aye, you were walking along. And he began telling me what a fine girl I am and wishing he could kiss me. Oh, the devil, star. And then he tried to kiss me, but I wouldn't let him. We were going over Musgrave's meadow together when... When all of a sudden he put his arms around me. Oh, darling, I'm ashamed. I'm there, ashamed. there, no, Hannah, dear, there. Don't take on. No. Oh, oh, the shame that he harmed her. Harmed her? What have you do something? Andrew, Jimmy. I swore many a time to have his life. But now. Good night. Wait, wait. Where are you going, Jimmy? Andrew, go after him. There's enough harm done already. Go and stop him, son. No, da. Andrew! I won't, da. The man has a right to be left to himself. Here, Sarah, take Hannah. Put her to bed. I'll go after you Jimmy. Don't leave me, da. Rest, daughter, rest now. That's your need. God's curse is hard and it isn't easy to bear. But we must bear it. 
There, kiss me good night now. Now go upstairs, your ma, dear, and let her take care of you. Now, I hate to pain, but I hope Jimmy will kill him. I wish I'd put the gun over the fireplace in his hand. Don't, don't, don't talk that way. I can't help it. I ought to be killed. He's not fit to live. Are you setting yourself up to judge God's work? An eye for an eye, Don, a tooth for a tooth. Your heart's better, son. Andrew, will you not do as I bid you? No, Don. I can't bring myself to it. Then, then I must go myself before another man damns the soul. Tell her where I've gone. Trudy, will you come with me? I was never one to interfere. Seeing as I'm queer and different. Very well. I'll go alone. Oh, quit that tool, Lenclosy. It's a great comfort when you're in trouble to hear a man playing a tune. He's a bad man, that withdraw. He has a sour nature in him. And quit blithering too. You've been talking the hour. All right, Andrew. I was only saying what he'd done to me. The truth is queer and different when he does harm to a girl like Hannah. Aye, it is different, Cruzy. You're right there. My sister's the finest girl in County Down. Aye, there isn't her equal. She's a fine young girl. It's only a fine man that's fit for her. A man like Jimmy Caesar would be a poor defender for Hannah. I, uh... Wonder will Jimmy Caesar kill with her all? What makes you wonder that? I'd better be going to my bed in the hayloft. Well, good night to you, Andrew. Good night. Oh, uh, I'm here to forget my whistle. Maybe Caesar would have killed him if he had been standing before him that minute. But it's a good step from here to Witherow's farm. And he had to have a gun. Well, it's a queer, sad thing. Cruelty. Just what are you trying to prove with your talk? Prove? Me? Oh, sure, I couldn't prove anything. I haven't got good sense, you know. Still in all, Andrew, supposing Jimmy sees it doesn't kill Witherow. Go to bed, Cruelty. That would be fearful, wouldn't it? Can't you picture Witherow sitting up there laughing to himself? And maybe saying he'll look out for Hannah again? Can't you see him with his great jaw hanging down, roaring with laughter? And telling them all in Jefferson's public house on County Fair Day? He'd never be such a collie as that crew. He couldn't for shame. Well, if I was Hannah's brother, I'd make sure. Make sure? Uh, isn't there a light at Witherow's farm? Do you see it? Aye, I see it. Doesn't look as if Jimmy's got there, does it? The light's still shining. He might be there for all that. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Well, I'll away on now to my bed. Ah, oh, that's a pretty gun in the fireplace there. Yours, Andrew? Aye. But I hold it one. But take care. Take care, slowly. Oh, it is a pretty thing. Jimmy Caesar should have taken it, maybe. Would have saved him time. Maybe. Don't be staring and sharp at the things I said. Sure, I don't know what I'm saying half the time. Shall I put the gun back, Andrew? Wait, wait. Pass it here, Cook. I'll... I'll put it back. Ah, sure. Well, good night, Andrew. It's such a pretty brave sky outside. You should see it. There's a lot of wee stars out tonight. But no moon. <laughs> hey, no moon. Hey, no moon. <laughs> One gun or two guns. This poor Clutie, though. Footsteps. Footsteps over the ditch. Over the brook. Up the hill. It's a man. Aye, but what man? There in the brush, there by the window. Ah, the light. Still on it is. But no moon. Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> and I the night, the night out. <laughs> Steel Corporation. Tonight's play is John Ferguson, starring Martha Scott, Whitwood Kane, Carl Swenson, and Edwin Jerome. Now, before we start our second act, here for United States Steel is George Hicks. My business is reporting, and that often means finding out what people think about important questions. So let me ask you a very important one. Do you have faith in the future of America? I'm sure your answer would be an emphatic yes, for you and your fellow Americans are like that. You believe in your country. You always have, and I know you always will. That faith is a power and a strength which should help us in great measure to meet the challenges of peace, just as it enabled us to meet those of war. You had no real doubt in the dark days after Pearl Harbor in your country's ability to achieve victory. You should have no doubts now about our country's future if we can be wise enough to frame and follow sound governmental policies. I can report to you that the United States Steel Corporation shares with you this faith in the future of our country. The order of the day at U.S. Steel and all of its subsidiaries is full speed ahead on a constructive program for modernizing plant facilities in order to meet America's peacetime needs. For example, one of U.S. Steel's new plants is designed to reproduce prefabricated houses at the rate of one every 25 minutes. And very soon I'm going to tell you about these houses. Faith in the future of America started U.S. Steel's modernization program long before the war. Started it in the period of the 30s, often referred to as the lean years. Those were the days when many said the country had more steel plants than it could use. And that was the time during which U.S. Steel spent $600 million in putting plants into tip-top condition and in adding several entirely new plants. Since Pearl Harbor, $500 million was added to this amount. And since VE Day, an additional expenditure of more than $100 million has brought the total to well over a billion dollars. This modernization program played a tremendous part in enabling U.S. Steel to meet the staggering steel demands of America at war and help speed us to our victory. Today and tomorrow, faith in our country's future and in its wisdom to chart and follow a sound governmental course will aid in meeting the responsibilities of peace. We now pause for station identification. WJZ. We continue with the second act of John Ferguson, starring Martha Scott as Hannah, Whitwood Kane as John Ferguson, Carl Swenson as James Caesar, and Edwin Jerome as Henry Witherell. John? I... Well, indeed, I can't make you out. There's a man to harm your own daughter and... God's he... word says I must love me enemies, Sarah. I wasn't able to love him, maybe, but I warned him about Jimmy. Oh, well, it's a queer way to look at things. If anyone was to hurt me, I'd do my best to hurt them back. Man's been hitting back since the beginning of the world. But hitting back has learned no one anything. But hatred and bitterness. Did you call Andrew? I, I did. You want me to? Andrew, go and inquire about Jimmy Caesar. 
Heaven knows what will happen if he... If he's to meet with her in the temper he's in last night. Just go to please him, Andrew. Your father's mind's upset about Jimmy. If Jimmy Caesar killed him, he was right to kill him. We'll all have to answer to God for his action. And God will deal justly with him. We can't do that. The man done wrong, he has a right to suffer for it. Aye, son, he'll suffer for it. But that's the work of his maker. And not the work of Jimmy Caesar, or you, or me, or any man. I don't understand that kind of religion. Come in, Jimmy. Come in. Oh, sure, we're glad to see you again. I'm a disgraced man. I I come here this morning to excuse myself to Hannah and all of you. Why, Jimmy? For not killing Willow last night. That makes me a happy man, Jimmy. God saved you from sin your soul of a murder. Hannah should know about this to relieve her mind. Hannah! Hannah, come down. Maybe she'd better have her breakfast upstairs. No, indeed, she won't have it upstairs. There's no good of her sitting up there, crying her eyes out. The world has to go on just the same as ever. Ah, good morning to you, Hannah. Good morning, Jimmy. Uh, Hannah, will will you forgive me for not killing Withrow? I didn't ask you to kill him. I had no call to ask you. Oh, quit talking about it. Quit talking. Quish, Andrew. Don't interrupt a well-meant word. Oh, gee. Oh, you're near starting me out of me with. I can't help it. Oh, what do you want coming running in like this for so early in the day? I must tell you. I must tell you. Oh, oh, oh there, there, there's Mr. Caesar. And have you never seen me before, you great gumption? No, don't be harsh with him, Jimmy. Trudy's greatly upset after what happened yesterday. He shot dead. And I thought Mr. Caesar had done it. Who's dead, Trudy? Henry Witherow. Henry Witherow was shot? I don't believe. You saw this man in the family. I shot through the heart. That's not true. It's not true. The poor creature doesn't know what he's saying. Clutie, are you sure? Oh, yeah, I'm certainly sure. I saw his cross myself stretched out in the yard. It was square to think of him lying there and me could hit him if I liked and him couldn't hit back. But, but who killed him? He... Well, now, don't look at me. I didn't do it. Oh, I swear to God it wasn't me. I'll, I'll take my oath on the Bible. Clutie. Clutie, did, did the constables ask anything about me? Oh, they'll be blaming me for it, and I never did it at all. John, John, you believe me, don't you? I came here this morning and told you that I was afraid to do it. Jimmy. Aye, Hannah. Don't deny it if you did it. I'm glad he's dead. I thank God for it. I'd be No, I wouldn't deny it, but I didn't do it. Hannah, believe me. Tell your dad that I didn't. You say you didn't, Jimmy. But you think I did. I know you do. I can see it in your eyes. It's a fearful thing to take a man's life. I wished with you, Clotie. Everyone will think that I did it. The constable and everyone. And if they get to know that I had a grudge against you, with it all. John, John, you, you'll never let on anything, will you? And Clutie. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Clutie, for all I said to you. I, I'll give you something for yourself. If you give me, Mr. Caesar. John, John, make him promise. You have more influence over him than anyone. Andrew, will you promise too? Not any of us can make any promises to me. You must answer to the law. But I didn't do it, I tell you. I'll take my oath on it. Where's the Bible? I, I swear to you on the Bible. Andrew, you know me. You you guess I wouldn't have the courage to kill Witherow, didn't you? I. There, John. Thanks. Do you hear what he says? Andrew doesn't believe I did it. You ought to try and get away. Uh, get away? Why? I don't believe you did it, but it's likely other people think. it. <laughs> wish, Trudy, this is no time for laughter. Here's the constable coming. <laughs> oh, the constable, oh, my lord. There's the sergeant and the crowd of people running out of the <laughs> Oh, they're coming to me. I know rightly they are. John, for dear sake, hide me somewhere. I'm going to tell you, daughter, let me hide. There's no use in hiding, Jimmy. You can't hide from yourself, can you? Hide me, Hannah, and God will reward you. Yeah, help him. I can't, daughter. He must submit himself to the will of God. There's no other way for a man to save himself. Good morning to you, Sergeant Carnigan. Good morning to you. I'm sorry to put you to any bother, John, but... I'm here to take Jimmy. James Caesar, I arrest you on the suspicion of murdering Henry Witherow. I didn't do it! The sergeant for the law of God don't take me up. You and me attended the same school together. Now, I'm hot sore it happened to do it, Jimmy, but I can't help myself. Hold out your hand. But you, you're going to handcuff me. All right. Stand back now, everybody. Let us through. Come along now, Jimmy. Well, I meant to kill him. I, I admit that. But I didn't do it. If, if, if I should never speak again, that's the God's truth. Come along now. God give you peace, Jimmy. Goodbye, Jimmy. Oh, Hannah. I, I wish for your sake I had killed him. 
I'd be a happier man than I am. Goodbye, Fjord. Clear away the door. Clear away now. Listening to the Theater Guild on the Air, presented by the United States Steel Corporation. Tonight's play is John Ferguson, starring Martha Scott, Whitford Kane, Carl Swenson, and Edwin Jerome. Now, before we start our third act here again for United States Steel, is George Hicks. When a new ship uh, passes its first test run and comes through with flying colors, there's an interesting tradition most of us landlubbers don't know about. The crew hoists the broom up to the masthead. A broom with its handle painted red, white, and blue. That signifies a clean sweep in the various tests the ship was put to. And this ceremony was repeated 143 times on the Ohio River, where the American Bridge Company constructed a 60-acre shipyard to turn out LSTs and other craft for our Navy. You might think it strange that our Navy asked a bridge company to build LSTs, the ships that took our men and tanks onto the beaches of the enemy. But building things of steel is the business and the know-how of American Bridge and the Virginia Bridge Company, both members of the U.S. Steel family. Before the war, these two companies helped build the steel spans that joined the opposite shores of rivers and bays in every part of our country and in more than 60 different foreign countries. The men of these two United States steel subsidiaries look with personal pride on New York's Hellgate Bridge and the Coos Bay Bridge in Oregon. They've spanned the Mississippi at New Orleans and the Bay at San Francisco. The skyscraper is also included in their achievement. The Woolworth Building, giant of its day, and the later super giants, the Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, and the RCA Building in Radio City. All these fabricated steel structures were the handiwork of the American Bridge Company. In Alaska and the Andes, in the Uganda Territory of Africa, the workers of the American and Virginia Bridge Companies are helping men carry on commerce and are bringing them closer together in friendship and the ways of peace. American and Virginia Bridge have already resumed their job of building the structures which help join the peoples of the world in understanding and serving each other. Continue with the third act of John Ferguson. It's two weeks later. James Caesar has been arrested for the murder of Henry Witherall, but he denies the charge. The Fergusons wait and wonder what is to happen. John. I, wife. Have you noticed there's been a queer change in Hannah this last two weeks since Jimmy was taken off to jail? Indeed, I fear she's going to be ill. She's been through a mort of sorrow for one so young. How can she dare go into the jail every day and face him, Jimmy? If it hadn't been for her change in her mind, Witherall would be living now. You must never say the like of that to her, Ma. Oh, you're one to talk, Andrew. You've hardly had a word to say to anyone yourself since it happened. Oh, John, our children seem to be slipping away from us. It's natural, that. But God never hits you with both hands at the one time. If we're losing our children, we're finding ourselves. You and me's drawn closer to one another, woman. Hi, John. You're always good comrades for all the trouble we've had. But we could talk better if you'd put down that Bible, John. It helps me to read the Lord's Word. And read a bit of it out. We've all need of help. Remember in the book of Samuel, where the war is going on and on, messengers keep coming to the king with tidings about the defeat of the enemy? Aye. And all the king really wants to know is one thing. Is his son all right? Is the young man Absalom safe? Jesus are no different than us, I guess. Oh, it's Hannah. Hannah. Hannah, how is Jimmy today? He seemed quieter in his mind, Andrew. Oh, good. It's not good, Andrew, that he should rest easy with a murderer in his soul. Has he confessed the truth yet? No. And there's something about the way Jimmy denies it. It never makes you believe him. The constable still thinks he did it, but even the constable says there are extenuating circumstances. There are. Nothing can extenuate a murder, my children. God's word is clear. Love your enemies. 
and under him that smiteth thee on one cheek, offer also the other. Them words is plain enough. For a bad deed that can only be repentance and forgiveness. We all have our natures, darling. Aye, daughter. But there's the one duty for the whole of us. Maybe they'll only give Jimmy penal servitude for life. There's many says Witherow should have been shot long ago. Aye, maybe a one says that. Even through to John. Penal you know, servitude's worse than a hanging. They take your life, but they don't give you death. I dare say you're right. Dear knows when you think of what they do to you, you'd wonder anybody ever killed a person at all. Who, who's that now? Quinn. I, I'm not empty handed this time, Mrs. Ferguson. Oh, the post. Mm-hmm. I have a letter from America for you. Mm-hmm. Well, why do you all look so surprised like? Don't you mind what you would expect in a letter from America and you, you were so caught up because you didn't get it? I declare it. It was the very day with her over shot. You remember? What? Uh, here's your letter. Thank you, Sam. Oh, not at all, Mrs. Ferguson. I only hope it's good news for you. Good night, sir. Well, I opened the letter, John. Aye. He sent the money to pay the mortgage. God's late, Doc. Don't say that, daughter. Don't. Oh, it's wicked. It's wicked. Oh, it had only come by the last boat. God doesn't make mistakes. There must be some meaning in it. There must be. Read the letter. I can't make out his writing without my son. I'll read it, Ma. Dear brother, I received your letter safe. It's a great deal of money to send, but I could not let the farm go. I will maybe come home soon myself. America is no place for an old man that wasn't born there. With my best love to all, I am your affectionate brother, William. There's a piece on the other side. P.S. I am sorry I missed the mail yesterday. I made a mistake in the day, but I dare say this will reach you in time. Hannah, Hannah, for dear sake, control yourself. Where's the light in it, Doc? Where's God's will in it? Uncle got the mail day, so Jimmy killed Witherow. And Doc said, God plans everything. <laughs> well, the farm's safe anyway. Aye, the farm's safe. Uncle William never had a good memory, had he? <laughs> Uncle, Uncle, don't, don't you give way to set the example to your sister's self-control. Hi, Doc, Will. Hannah, you and Hannah are overstrung. I've noticed how quiet the pair you've been lately. You've been brooding so much over Jimmy. You can't think clearly about him. Jimmy didn't kill with Oda. I know he didn't. How do you know? I... I know because... It was me that does. Oh, no! No! What is the mad saying? Sit down, sir. Andrew is beside him, sir. Andrew, you mustn't frighten your ma like that, giving way to your fancies. Go to bed, son, rest yourself. You're tired, me too. No, no, Da. I'm not away in the mind, I tell you. It was me that killed Withrow. You're demanded, son. I killed him with that gun there above the fireplace. Oh, Mr. Do you know what you're saying? I, I know rightly, Ma. Oh, it's not true. It's not true. Andrew. Hi, Da. Do you mean... Do you mean you did for certain kill Withrow? I do, Da. Oh, my God. My God. I, I knew that Jimmy wouldn't kill him. So I made up my mind I'd kill him myself. Andre, dear. I, I'm not sorry I killed him, man. I felt no more remorse when I killed him, nor to tell you feels when he killed the rat. I understand, Andrew. It never entered no one's mind that it was me killed. At first, I didn't care whether Jimmy got hung or not. It would serve him right, I said. And then I tried to comfort myself by saying he, he wouldn't be hung at all when, when people knew the way he'd been provoked. But I got more and more ashamed. I couldn't sit still in the house with you and my dad saying Jimmy ought to confess. I couldn't rest nowhere. The only consolation was to go into the fields and listen to Clooty playing his whistle. Clooty knew it was me done it. For all he didn't say. We must hide you somewhere. We'll send you to America, Sonda. Deliver your uncle. Aye, aye, that's it. That's what the money is for. You made certain sure. That's what it come for. Stir yourself, Sarah, woman. Stir yourself. The sergeant might be here. Come any minute. Come on, son. Get ready. You must quit the place tonight, all. No, I, son, you must. We hope to go fast with the next train. We'll send the money to you there. You can change your name. I can't go, Da, and leave Jimmy in the wrong. We'll think about Jimmy afterwards. Come and get ready. Go with your da, son, and get ready. No, I must do right by Jimmy for my peace, sake. You must save yourself first. You're asking me to do what you wouldn't let Jimmy do for all he begs you. 
You're my son, Andrew, and Jimmy's not. Jimmy always meant to kill Witherow. He killed a man many while in his mind, and the Bible says you think a sin, you commit a sin. Come away, son. Hannah, you persuade him. I can't, Da. Andrew knows what's best for himself. Do you want to see your brother hanged, Hannah? What peace will Andrew have if Jimmy suffers for him? That's what I say to myself many the time, Hannah. You see that yourself, don't you, Da? I've suffered enough. It's not just the right to put more trouble on me now. I've lost my health. And then there's a mortgage and Hannah and Jimmy. And now you, Andrew. Oh, I've bore enough. It's not fair to ask me to bear any more. Yeah, we all have to make our own peace. You used to always to say that. Hannah's right, Doc. I'll go down now and tell the sergeant. Son, son, wait, wait. I'll, I'll not let you go, Andrew. I'll not let you go. There'll be no content for me until I content myself. That's the way of it, Ma. You understand me, Doc, don't you? Don't you sure of it, Doc? John, Andrew... You could go to America, and when you're safe, you can send home a confession to save Jimmy. Or we could go ourselves and, and tell the sergeant, once you're safe in America, that would do, wouldn't it? Speak up, John. Don't just sit there, stand. I'm trying to discover God's will. God's will? I don't want God's will. I want my son. It's nothing to me what he's done. He's my son. I don't care if he killed a hundred men. No, it's my oh, there's no blame in what you've done. You killed a man who harmed your sister. You'd never hang for it in America, and maybe not in England either. Many the man would come into the street and shake your hand. In Ireland. I am. I'll die. You've got to help me. I can't bear my taken off. Don, I can't advise you. Don't ask me. I was weak a minute ago. I forgot God's will. Maybe you're right. Oh, have you no nature at all? None of you. John, this is your son. The lad your daughter done. Took pride in I take no pride in anything now. I must have sinned bitterly against God to be punished this way. I'm willing to pay whatever prices demand of me to atone for this. But Andrew, that's hard. I won't let you go, son. Oh, but Ma, don't you remember what my dad said to Jimmy? You can't hide from yourself. There's not a true in that. You've always said it, Dad. I am as true. Before God is true. Oh, will no one help me to keep my son safe? Will you all take him from me? Look at me, Ma. Kiss me. It's best this way. You'll see that yourself from now. Don't leave me, son. I must, Ma. Will you come to the sergeant for me, huh? I am. I'll come. Thank you. <laughs> goodbye, Doc. Ma, goodbye. No, Andrew. No. <laughs> Why did you let them go, John? I can't let them go. I can't. You must, Sarah. God has some purpose with us. And there's no use in holding out against God. He knows. And we don't. I won't let him go. I'll bring him back. I'm go. I'm go. Don. Don. My only son. Me an old woman. You had no call to be sending him away. John, how can your sister come be reading the Bible with your only son walking straight to his death? Isn't he the only son I have, too? Is it any easier for a father than it is for a mother? Woman, woman, your sorrow is no more than mine. Now sit down, woman, and give me a hold of your hand. God's been good to us, and he's been bitter hard. But whatever it was, we're born it together, haven't we? I, John. And we'll bear this together, too, woman, won't we? It's a hard thing for anyone to bear. Your own son be taken from you. My wife, it is. But we must bear it. Listen to God's word, sir. It'll strengthen you. And the king said unto Cushai, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushai answered, the enemies of my lord, the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God 
I had died for thee. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Gentlemen, this is Lawrence Langner again for the Theatre Guild to say thank you to Martha Scott, Whitford Kane, Carl Swenson, Edwin Jerome, Agnes Young, James Monk, Walter Kinsella, and Tony Ross. Next week, the Theatre Guild on the Air presents The Guardsman by Ferenz Molnar, starring Alfred Lunt and Lynn Fontan. The Lunts have just returned from a rousing tour for our boys in France and Germany. And a brilliant season in London where they've been playing in the Terence Radigan play, Oh Mistress Mine, which they will do this winter in New York. Next week's production of The Guardsman is by way of being a birthday party. It marks the coming of age of the long association of the Lunts and the Theatre Guild. Just about this time, 21 years ago, we presented this newly married couple in the Guardsman. Alfred and Lynn have worked together successfully ever since in some of the most brilliant plays of this generation. You must admit that this is something of a record as far as teamwork goes. They do say Olsen and Johnson have been together about that long, but of course they aren't married. <laughs> United States Steel Corporation hopes that you will be with us next week at the same time when we will bring you Ferenc Molnar's brilliant comedy, The Guardsman, starring Alfred Lump and Lynn Fontaine. <laughs> the staff for the Theatre Guild on the air includes Homer Fickett, director... George Condor, producer, Armina Marshall, executive director of the radio department. The score was composed and conducted by Harold Levy, and tonight's play was adapted for radio by Stanley Young. Do you like to save theater programs, recall plays and authors, settle arguments about which actor played which part? Then perhaps you'd like the program of the Theater Guild on the Air, prepared for each broadcast with complete information about the play and the players. U.S. Steel is ready to send this program to you upon request. Just address U.S. Steel Corporation, Radio Department, 71 Broadway, New York City. Programs in this series of particular interest to servicemen and women are broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of Armed Forces Radio Service. Broadcasting Company.